Hi everybody, I'm Terry Lacano from Austin City Limits. We are back with Sloan Stubel, AKA Dayglow. Although I guess Dayglow is the concept, not necessarily even a band name, is it per se, but you can use it any way you want. Sure, yeah, uh, it's like a project, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a band because I write and produce all this stuff myself, um, but yeah, it's just like what I put my music out as. Well, Sloan, it was a great show tonight, and I know you already made some uh, reference to it from the stage about how this was like the largest audience you played to and the first show you've done, you know, to a live audience since before the before times, before mm -hmm. the pandemic. But, uh, I mean, how was it out here? How did it feel overall? It was awesome. Yeah, this was so fun. Um, such a dream come true to be able to play Austin City Limits and... Um, yeah, I mean, just like growing up in Texas and knowing about Austin City Limits. I, I'm 21 now, so it had already been a legendary thing. So now to like be a part of it is uh, pretty cool. So I'm stoked. Yeah, to be able to check that off your bucket list to this early is uh, you yeah. know, kind of unusual. Sure. Pretty cool. I'm, I'm stoked. Well, let's talk a little bit about your, your history going back to Fuzzy Brain. I guess uh, some of the songs that you wrote go back to your high school days uh, and and Fuzzy Brain was something that, that you basically pulled together when you were, what, like about 17? 17 and 18, um, yeah. I just wrote and produced and made all of it in Logic um, without really any sort of gear. Um, I had a DI box and um, an electric guitar and a couple plugins that I would gotten for free on the internet and um, just made music, yeah. And so fast forward, but not too far forward three to four years later you've got your newest project harmony house it has come out and it doesn't seem like a lot of time a lot of years but you know especially when you're 21 it is a pretty good stretch of time how have you how have you changed and how has your music changed in that time oh my gosh um i mean it's silly to say you know for like i'm still a very young person you know i don't have like too much wisdom or something. I definitely don't think I know what I'm doing at all. Um, but yeah, I mean, just from 18 to 21, you change a lot. Um, and I guess you technically become an adult. I don't know. I thought 18 was the adult, but now I feel like it's, I don't know, 21. Yeah. But I feel like I've just grown up a lot. And um, with everything that's happened with Dayglow, it's been such a change of pace and direction in my life um, that I would have never expected, and it's been really quick. Um, and any sudden change for anyone, it just takes a lot to process. Um, so it's inspired a lot of the music and pushed me to internalize and think about, you know, the change that I'm going through. Um, but yeah, I mean, my influences have changed a lot. Uh, hopefully they'll continue to through my mm -hmm. life. There's a lot of music to hear out there in the world and um, a lot of music to make. Um, and yeah, I don't know, like I'm just growing up. And I think that's the really cool thing about Dayglow is that as I grow up, I'll have albums of my, you know, two or three year time in my life and people can kind of see the steps of me becoming who I am. So it's going to be cool to look back and, you know, see how I've changed. So I think I saw in some interview that you described Harmony House, the, the, the new album, as sort of uh, a modern independent take on what you would imagine a, a hit 80s record to be. Mm -hmm. So um, tell us a little more what you mean by that. Sure, yeah. I, I mean, I was listening to a lot of like Doobie Brothers, um, Michael McDonald specifically, um, Christopher Cross, Whitney Houston, you know, just like these 80s, like, I don't know, like giants, you know, of these like pop hits and stuff. And I mean, objectively, I guess pop music is good music, and songs like I Want to Dance with Somebody, Whitney Houston, like, is never going to die. You know, it's like an amazing song. And I was just looking at all those songs musically and sonically, and then looking at pop music today, and I didn't really see much crossover. And so that was my first initial idea of, like, just drawing from that music, because, one, it was all I was listening to, you know, and um, you kind of are your influences. And so I started reflecting that 70s and 80s pop music because it was just so musically and lyrically pretty different. I think a lot of 
new music, which is nothing nothing bad about this at all, but um, a lot of music, there's like this new thing where people say like, I'm the main character, you know, like that's the thing I hear all the time with, with music and music's very like self um, boosting. And that's really good. I think there's a time and place for that. Um, but something I love about 80s pop or at least the 80s pop songs that I like, they seem more uh, communal. Like, rather than, like, love yourself, it kind of, like, inspires you to love, like, your neighbor or something, you know? So I kind of tried to channel that fun and communal aspect of 80s pop music into my record. Kind of long-winded answer, but, No, no, yeah. no. I get it. You also said that I guess your first notion about the new Harmony House album was that it was going to be a soundtrack for a sitcom. So where does that come from? Sitting through a pandemic, watching a lot of reruns on, on TV? Or, or <laughs> explain more about that. I honestly, I really don't watch TV, um, which is ironic because, you know, that's what I was saying. Um, but, yeah, I think there's just this really interesting thing going on right now in culture with, like, nostalgia. nostalgia and, um, like, kids my age will be watching older shows, like on Netflix or something, and listening to older music, like myself. And there's something that the internet is doing, and it's like allowing new things that are old to like truly be new. You know, it's like, I've been, I just discovered um, Christopher Cross. You know, it's mm -hmm. not new music, but to me it is. And um, I think the internet has created this strange like uh, reach for nostalgia. Like there's so much noise now and so much to choose from that people are like going to the past uh, to find new stuff. And um, I wanted to just kind of play into the nostalgic idea of all of that and put it into Harmony House. Um, and then I guess the other side of the coin would be, um, I think it's just interesting that sitcoms are usually like supposed to just be like normal people in their living room. <laughs> I'm like, why do people watch that? But I felt like this past year, like I was just like in my living room normal person but like I was being watched you know it's like these people doing these interviews and all this stuff and um, I don't know just kind of like playing into that idea really helped me write a lot of songs so yeah, yeah as you've said you know the there is so much noise like a wall of noise you describe it from the internet that people your age or any age look backwards for some sort of inspiration or, or something different mm. that takes them away from that wall of noise and, you know, every generation is different in their own way. When I grew up, most of the music we listened to was in our own little bubbles. You know, mm -hmm. what we listened to on the radio or what, what, what we knew our friends were, were listening to. We didn't have the opportunity. And this is one of the good things about the Internet. There are a lot of bad. Mm -hmm. That you can go discover anything. Right. The most obscure subgenre of a subgenre from any corner of the world. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and learn something from it that yeah. you might be able to incorporate into your sound then it becomes part of, of you, you know, and, and your music. Yeah. I think something really fun about the 80s, too, was I love, like, synth like synth history and, like, synthesizers and stuff, and a lot of the analog big advancements were happening um, in the 80s, and everybody was, like, using them, but in such a playful, creative way. I think it's just such a fun idea that, like, there was this brand new like computer technology like musical thing that like someone had in their studio and then like this music was being made where now there's been you know decades of synth music and it's just changed a lot and um i just love like early electronic music and stuff like that and that really inspires me um to think about like the exploration of like these new tools you know cuz now like it's old technology but I think it's just fun that it just felt like a tool at the time, you mm -hmm. know, where now you can do anything with a computer and it can, like I've seen like there's like AI generated songs, like <laughs> there's AI that can make complete songs and that's just, I that's you no know, doubt. too much, you know. Yeah. So with Harmony House, you basically wrote, recorded, produced and mixed everything on the album, yes. all of the songs, yeah. all of the tracks. If not in your bedroom, somewhere in the house or near nearby, yeah. And uh, and here you are on a stage with live musicians and performing to a live a live audience. Um, it seems seems like you're ready for that, though. You're ready for that big leap. 
Yeah. We're ready or not, here it comes. So. Sure, yeah. I, I kind of like segment it into two things. Like the music that I make is really personal. And the greatest way to do that is to just make it myself um, and not have anybody else um, like, you know, change it or touch the music. Um, Because I think there's definitely pros and cons of being a solo artist or having a band. But for me, and I think my personality and the way that I make music, it makes just the most sense for me to make it completely, put it out. The record is its own thing, and then this is kind of like a cover band that I'm a part of, mm -hmm. you know, and um, it makes it just really fun and allows everyone to, like, celebrate the record that just kind of exists, you know? Yeah, and you can get out and dance on the stage, and hopefully the audience will get up and, and, and dance, which you may or may not do in your bedroom at home, too, but, yeah. you know, it's a little different. It is nice having people around, um, yeah, because, I mean, that's what it's all about um, is for – other people to hear it and you know take the music and change you know put it in their own lives so to see them react positively mm. is always an awesome feeling well finally as if writing recording producing and mixing all of the music at home is not enough you've also been busy producing videos uh, how, explaining how you wrote each one of the songs how you wrote and produced and recorded each one of the songs uh, for all of those music nerds out there that really want to know every little detail and nuance. Yeah. And even more recently, you've started doing a series of, of conversations, a very nice chat with, mm -hmm. and I saw the one you did with Alfie Templeton, mm -hmm. who's an 18-year-old you know, singer-songwriter musician from, uh, from the UK, and I understand you're planning to do more of that. I mean, you obviously must really enjoy using these tools for more than just making music, for, for uh, communicating and maybe, you know, maybe even explaining a little bit about what you're doing and digging a little deeper for the benefit of people who do care to know, you know, more about it. And then discovering and helping people to discover other musicians and, and what they're up to. Yeah. It's a really cool thing you're doing. I hope you can, can continue to do that as well as hit the road and, and, and play live music. So. Well, look, uh, thanks for coming and helping to make history here tonight on the ACL stage. I wouldn't be surprised if it's not the last time you set foot on this stage. And uh, next time, maybe it'll be with a few more people in the audience, you know, yeah. once we get all this pandemic stuff behind us. Sure. So best of luck to you. Thank you. Uh, Sloan, and uh, good luck down the road. Yeah, thanks, Terry. All right, take care. And thank you all for being with us here tonight. And that wraps it up for another Austin City Limits from the Moody Theater in downtown Austin, Texas. So thank you, good night, and stay safe.